Hello and welcome to our pre-budget economist special. This is the show where we discuss the big budget numbers. How much may the final budget differ from the interim budget? Does the FM need to change her revenue and tax assumptions after the excellent April-June tax collections and the RBI dividend? Is there space and a need to spend more, especially after the election verdict on revenue, on welfare programs? And finally, will the government uh, target a lower deficit number? Joining me are first two heavyweight economists, uh, Sajid Chinoy of JP Morgan and member of the PMEAC and Swami Kanti Ghosh of State Bank, member of the 16th Finance Commission. A little later, we will also be joined by Neelkant Mishra, also PMEAC member and economist at Axis Bank. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, Shomyo, let me start with uh, you. Uh, you're very busy, I know, with the Finance Commission work as well. But uh, would you uh, expect the Finance Minister to announce much higher uh, you know, tax estimates? Uh, we just have got the April-July tax estimates and across the board, they're like, you know, 19, 20% higher than last year. But the budget had, interim budget had only assumed about 11 or 12 percent rise in taxes. Yeah, thank you, Lata, for having me on the show. No, I think uh, the uh, just to take uh, you a little, take a little back. The prerogative of this is fiscal uh, the budget comes against the backdrop of an uh, impressive tax revenue and also the tax collections. But there are some uh, things which the government like to use to address to, given the fact that the, the uh, the fiscal situation looks much better than what it was anticipated and significantly post covid i think the first thing to look out for in the budget and if you look if you ask me is that i think the rbi dividend uh, numbers came it as a positive surprise to the markets and i think all to all the entire financial ecosystem of around 2.1 trillion so my sense is that well the government is committed to a fiscal deficit number as you know that the 4.5 percent is the fiscal deficit number which the government is projected by fi26 as per the new frbm targets my sense is that the and the government could actually look into and tax collection in the range of 14 to 15 percent basically the nominal gdp growth rate in the interim budget is around 11 percent and i don't see any reason to change that number if you retain that nominal the GDP number at 11 percent that makes an nominal GDP growth rate of around I think 328 trillion. So even with an tax policy of 1.2 to 1.3, which is eminently achievable given the current trends, I think the government can target and tax revenue of around say 15 to 16 percent. So overall okay. fiscal deficit, which was in the interim budget picked at around 16.9 trillion could mm. be reduced a little bit to around 15.9 trillion. But given wow. the fact that there is buy and see, GDP growth has been solid, the government could still target a deficit which is lower than 5.1%. So basically, it. it could be around 49 to 5%. But at the same point of time, mm. the 2.1 trillion could be actually used to okay. give up the expenditure a little bit. I don't think okay. the expenditure I'll, could I'll be come to the, beyond the may, trillion. Yeah. I'll come to so, the expenditure in just a minute. Let's okay, just so, do revenue first. Uh, Sajid, your take. We all know that uh, the Reserve Bank was expected to give 80,000 crores. They gave 2.1 trillion. So there is that 1.3 trillion extra with the government. But will it be more than that? As uh, uh, Shomyo says, he's expecting the government to have, you know, almost 2 trillion more uh, because of higher taxes. You agree? I suspect it will be more. And I think the real story of the fiscal lata over the last five or six years has been how gross taxes have evolved. Let's go back to 2018-19 before the corporate tax cut. Gross tax to GDP was 11%. That number fell when corporate taxes were cut. But because of, you know, efforts over the last six, uh, five or six years, we've seen the GST has been kind of fixed and reformed. We've seen uh, direct taxes have been very buoyant. The base has been normalized. Uh, we expect that, you know, uh, last year, gross tax to GDP was 11.7%. Right? The actual numbers are now out. So we've seen, you know, 0.7% increase over the last five years, despite a corporate tax cut. Um, and my sense is last year, the government got a growth rate of about 13.5%. They were quite conservative as the fiscal estimates have been in the last three, four years, very conservative, kind of under-promising and over-delivering. And so mm -hmm. despite that 13.5%, the interim budget only kind of budgeted, you know, 11.5% growth. I suspect that's what we'll get, that in the budget numbers that print, you'll still get conservative assumptions on tax growth. 
But because last year's base is higher, even if you make an assumption of 11.5% growth vis-a-vis -vis the achieved number of 13.5%, tax to GDP will be even higher at 11.8% of GDP. So you get now higher RBI dividends and higher gross tax to GDP, even making very conservative assumptions. I think the bigger message that are from this is that we come into this budget with the government having multiple fiscal degrees of freedom. And they, 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 they emerge because first, apart from higher taxes, we had you know, higher consolidation than envisaged last year. The deficit mm. over the last two years has gone from 6.4 to 5.6. That means you now have less to travel. You've got to go from 5.6 to 5.1. A, yeah. B, you've got extra cash balances with you, which means borrowing can come down. And C, you now have the prospect of higher taxes and a higher RBI dividend. Yeah. So there are multiple yeah. degrees of freedom. Okay. No, I take your point. Uh, what Sajid is telling us is that uh, last year's fiscal deficit was expected to be 5.8. We got the final numbers uh, a few weeks back. It turned out to be only 5.6%, not 58 and that was because the tax collections were higher by about 30,000 crores. And that clearly comes into uh, this year by way of a base. Uh, Shomyo, I'm coming to the deficit because that's the big number the, the markets want. They want to know if the borrowing will be less. And I know both of you are urging to tell me that, but let's come to expenditure first. There is that election result which some people interpret as anger of the lower uh, communities. And we know that consumption was lower even when we looked, if we pull apart the GDP of last year, it was almost entirely capex driven. Uh, personal final consumption expenditure rose only 4%. So is there a chance that, you know, overall tax bracket will be brought up from 2.5 lakh to, uh, from 3 lakh to 4 lakh or something? Or, you know, there is more rural expenditure. Do you expect bigger changes in the expenditure front? Yeah, thank you, Lata. I think that there are two aspects to it. Uh, one, the next budget is actually also not uh, not even nine months away. It's in the month of 1st of February. So I think the government could actually take a graded approach to fiscal reduction and if uh, required, uh, to look into some sort of a tax incentive to boost up consumption. My sense is that uh, the government in the budget could actually look into some sort of tweaking the agricultural sector reform, some reforms in the agriculture rural sector, which is pending for the last couple of years. I think for whatever reasons that has not been pushed because that is one aspect. The second aspect is that I think the the there is two types. The, the roadmap is also of the direct tax the implementation of the direct tax code, and the second roadmap is that overall the GST two implementation. So my sense is that I am not expecting too much of an leeway on the personal income taxes front. Of course, there could be some giveaways here and there because you all know that we are actually, the government is pushing us to move towards a new tax regimes where That's exemptions right. are not available. So if mm. I take that as the benchmark, I mm. don't expect too much amount of leeway, but of course, the government can always go for lower personal income tax regime yeah. with the caveat that you have to move towards a new tax regime. So in my sense, some changes could come in the personal income taxes front, but there could be bigger changes or a bigger roadmap for the rural economy and the and also in terms of some of the issues impacting the MSME sector and generating employment in the budget. And that could be okay. taken forward in February also when the next year budget is presented. Fair point. Now the big uh, question to both of you and if you can keep it brief. Shamil Kanti Ghosh, what is the deficit expected? How much can the market borrowing program go down if it goes down? No, I think, Lata, there are two figures I should quote over here. I think um, I agree with the larger picture that aggressive fiscal college consolidation may not be the need of the hour given the government has comfortable fiscal space. So I would I expect the fiscal deficit to be paid, but still it should need to give a message to the market in terms of fiscal consolidation. So basically the fiscal deficit could be picked up around 4.9%, which makes it around the deficit overall deficit in absolute numbers lower than 16 trillion so this would means a net borrowing estimates to the market which will be close to around 11 trillion and a gross borrowing market estimates which could be around close to 13 trillion but oh. these numbers actually could change if the government announces switches or other things in the budget but my sense is that it will the government will go for consolidation but at the same point time or point of time use the additional fiscal space to rev up the spending to some extent so, so how much does the borrowing, how, how, may, how much may the borrowing go down by? So I think at 11.1 trillion, it will be lower than last year. If I remember the last year, about, overall, uh, 
uh, was around 11.8 trillion in the interim okay. budget. So about 60,000 crore less. Yes. Got yes. it. Yeah. Uh, Sajid, your best guess. Very quickly, I think uh, my expectation is still that the fiscal deficit will be close to the entire number of 5.1%. But the beauty of these extra fiscal degrees of freedom is you can have all three things happening. A, oh. this, close to the same fiscal deficit. B, higher expenditure. But C, lower borrowing. Because as we discussed, the government had about 1.5 trillion of ca extra cash balances oh. than it had budgeted. Now, yeah. I think half yeah. of that is states investing in T-bills. There's about 70 to 80,000 crore of cash balances from last year's borrowing that were not That's budgeted, right. which can be used to bring down this year's borrowing. The question is, does the government do it on T-bills or dated borrowing? That is up to them. But you could have a situation where borrowing is lower, the deficit mm. is the same, and you get higher expenditure. So in a way, you can oh, bring your cake and eat it too. You can do it all. Oh, you're right. You're right. We could have the same 5.1, and uh, you could still have lower borrowing. Thank you very much, Samik Adhikosh and Sajid Chinoy, for setting the tone on what to expect from the big budget numbers. But uh, uh, viewers, don't go anywhere. Coming up is uh, a similar conversation on the big budget numbers with Neelkant Mishra, the chief economist of Axis Bank.